Hey guys, it's your girl Toya Wallace here with Salt and Stilettos. Today we'll be conducting an uneventful drug screen collection. So stay tuned because we're gonna get started. So now your client walks in. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Are you here for a drug test? Yes. All right, go ahead and sign in right here. And I will also need a copy of your driver's license. All right. Okay, we get the copy of the driver's license. We, with DOT, you don't need to make any copies, you just verify. Also, if they do have an authorization form from their employer, you will verify the information that's on the form with their driver's license. You can go ahead and have a seat, okay? All right, so while the client is waiting, we're gonna make sure that we have the area set up, which is something you should already have done. I'm um, like already completed, but we're gonna do that here. All right, so the area is free of debris. You wanna make sure you have your laptops, you wanna make sure you have all your CCFs in place, you have pens and everything like that. So I start off with getting gloves. All right, gloves are on. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and apply the blue tablet for tamper-proof purposes. You also wanna make sure that the bathroom is free of any liquid substances, no soap, no detergent, no bleach, nothing like that. We do have our biohazard um, trash bin in here. This is also empty toilet paper and that is all, okay? Now that the bathroom, the tablet is already placed in there, I'm also gonna tape up the bathroom as it's supposed to comply with DOT rules and procedures. So now that the bathroom is prepped, the blue tablet, we insert the blue tablet we still have on our gloves. We're gonna take the client to the back so they can go ahead and empty all their pockets and begin the collection process. All right, ma'am, you can follow me back here. I need you to empty out your pockets and lock everything up in the box. Now that she has emptied her pockets and locked everything in the box, now it's time for them to either wash their hands or sanitize their hands. In this case, because we have one restroom and the bathroom is already set up for collection, she is going to wipe her hands with Lysol disinfectant wipes. And this is to remove any type of dirt, any type of tamper, residue, or anything like that um, when it comes to her doing the collection. Go ahead and... Wipe your hands for me, please. Okay, the donor has sanitized their hands. I'm gonna now have them to choose their cup. Okay. You have the option to either let the donor empty out the contents of the cup, or you can do it as long as the donor is watching what you're doing. Okay, here you go, ma'am. All right, you're gonna do a DOT urine collection. You have two to three minutes, and the purpose of the two to three minutes is because you have to read the test in four minutes, okay? So we tell them two to three minutes to give them time, a good time frame so they'd be able to go and come up within that four minutes time. So you have two to three minutes. I need you to give me 60 or more. For those of you who have been trained or have not been trained, just so you know, with DOT, it's a total of 45 mLs. 30 in one and 15 in the other. We ask them for 60 or above so they could at least give us enough. So two to three minutes, you wanna make sure you give me 60 or above. Do not wash your hands, do not flush the toilet. You wanna make sure that the donor is listening to you carefully and you're gonna talk them through the process. They are not allowed to wash their hands, they are not allowed to flush the toilet. When they come out from the restroom, you will then give them the direction and the directive to proceed and move forward. So go ahead, in the restroom, you got two to three minutes. Do not wash your hands, do not flush the toilet, as the test will be void. When you're finished, just bring the cup out and rest it on the counter. 
So while the donor is in fact in the restroom, um, getting ready to provide us a sample, you're wanna, you're you're wanting to make sure that you know your area is free of debris. You're still listening to make sure that they don't have anything on them or they're not trying to tamper with the collection. Make sure you also have a timer or you keep in mind that you did give them two to three minutes so they can go ahead and provide you the sample. Okay, are you done? Thank you. I need you to stay right there and watch me as I go ahead and conduct your split. So now that we have broken the seal in front of the donor, you also want to check the temperature to make sure the temperature is in range, with it, which it is. So in label bottle A, we're going to add a little over 30. We need 30, but we're going to add a little bit over 30 just for transport purposes. And in vial B, we're going to add a little bit over 15 because we do need 15 in vial B. At this time, we're going to discard the rest or you can give the donor the opportunity to discard the rest. As the collector, I advise or I recommend that you go ahead and discard it because you want to make sure you still, you're still able to watch the restroom to make sure nothing was there for tampering reasons, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and discard the remainder of the urine. You want to make sure every discard every every specimen cup into the bag that has it been and also remove your gloves at this time you can also remove the tape from the bathroom and you can have the donor now wash their hands before they touch anything else while the donor is washing their hands I will go ahead or I should say the, the collector, go ahead and get another pair of gloves. You want to ensure and you want to ensure that the donor doesn't forget anything. So you will tell them, go ahead and remove the, your contents or your items from the from the lockbox while um, they are waiting for the process to be completed. So ma'am, you can go ahead and empty out the lockbox, get your personal belongings. At this time, everything on the CCF has been completed, right? The top portion. The second part of the CCF. So I just wanna make sure everybody understands the whole idea of the CCF. The CCF is a chain of custody. It must be completed correctly because that can cause for a fatal flaw collection. All right, so you wanna verify that, when you get the ID, you wanna verify the donor's ID information, make sure if it's DOT and they have a CDL license, you put the CDL license information in there. You check FMCSA, you wanna make sure you check the P-code option, which has the five panel drugs that they need. You wanna also make sure you check the temperature gauge, so we know the temperature was in range. We know it also is a split collection because with DOT five panel, it is going to be a split collection. You verify that all information is correct. Now that we have done so, we're going to have the donor initial and, and date the actual bottles. So you do not have them initial on the CCF. You want to make sure you place the labels on the bottle. Label A goes with bottle A which is the one with 30 ml and label b goes with bottle b which has the 15 ml ma'am i need you to go ahead initial and date for me please and do the same thing with this one Always double check to make sure they did in fact date as well as initial. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and place the specimen. There's two pouches in the bag. You wanna put, the specimen goes in the front part, the front part where it has the actual tissue in case anything leaks out the bag. All right, now that is done. We're gonna place right here. I'm going to double check again when it comes to your paper chain you want to always double check that you did not skip anything all right so 
I'm double checking and making sure the authorization form information as well as the ID information is accurate. We want to make sure we have the first and last name, the ID number, you, you select the specifying agency and you want to specific, specify the correct drugs. There's no need for no remarks because this is uneventful. The donor didn't give me any kickbacks. Nothing happened. The temperature range was in fact correct as well as we know it is a split collection. This is going to go with FedEx. We're going to release this to FedEx. So you want to make sure you complete where it says specimen is released to FedEx. So you want to put that there. Now that is done. You're going to remove the perforated area. You're going to turn to page two of the CCF. That says, where it says medical review officer, and we're gonna have the donor sign, copy, sign, sign the copy, print their name, put their date of birth, and all the information that is requested. So donor, go ahead and sign, print your name. And also you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that the donor puts two phone numbers. Even if it's the same number, you wanna make sure that it's completed. We need a daytime phone number and an evening time phone number. The date of birth has to be completed. The two days date, the date of the collection, and they must print and sign. This is uneventful. If in this, any situation where they decide not to sign, then of course that is another type of scenario, and we have rules and policies to follow. You know, to follow that when it comes to refusal to sign. But with this, this is uneventful. The donor didn't give us any issues, so we're gonna go ahead and continue with the collection. All right, thank you. So now that is complete. As the collector, now is when I am gonna sign and print my name. I'm also going to put the date and the time of the collection. All right, now that is all completed. We're gonna go ahead and remove the lab copy. We're gonna fold it in half and then fold it in half again. You wanna make sure that the barcode is facing out that way when the lab receives it, they can scan it, okay? Always make sure that the donor is watching what you're doing because if they're not, you must stop, get their attention. Once that is done, you're gonna remove the foil part of the label, seal the bag in front of them. You wanna give the donor their copy, which would be the last copy. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. The MRO copy, you want to make sure that you give the employer, the MRO, you want to make sure you turn the MRO copy within 24 hours, as well as the employer copy, and then the other copy will be the collector copy. You keep that for your records. All right. Viewers, listeners, I'm happy that you guys were able to get an idea of what an uneventful collection is. This is it. It's, it's a very simple process. You just have to learn the rules and the policies that DOT has provided. This was an uneventful collection. Stay tuned for the other collection scenarios that we're going to offer. All right. Make sure you subscribe down below to Salt and Stilettos. Make sure you hit the notification bell. And I would also like you guys to comment. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. It's your girl Toya Wallace from Salt and Stilettos.